Hey guys, thanks for watching. Anybody with a new rifle, or in my case, a new barrel, has to go through this step, and that's load development. It's really something I don't like to do. Um, I like to shoot a lot, but putting in the time to be a perfectionist really isn't my thing. And I always second guess what I do. Um, with the standard load development that I do, I, I normally load 30 or 40 rounds in 10 round strings. I go out to the range and I shoot at, say, 300 yards. I shoot at a single dot at 300 yards, and I'm looking for vertical spread. Uh, typically, I'd have, like I said, three rows of 10. I'd start low. I'd work my way high. And the minute I see a high pressure sign or a flattened primers or a sticky bolt handle, I take everything above it and I remove it. That way, when I go to my next string, I start high and work my way low. I don't shoot that same uh, bullet that, that gave me the high pressure signs. That's typically how I do it. My problem is when I get home, I always second guess what I did. Um, when you do that type of load development, everything comes into play. Not only do you have to reload everything to the finest, finest detail, you also have to get behind your rifle and do everything behind your rifle absolutely perfect. So, uh, good sight picture, sight alignment, good trigger pull, good trigger follow through. Everything has to be flawless. And to do that for 40 or 50 rounds really gets difficult. Um, if you ask me to do that for five rounds, maybe even 10 rounds, I could really concentrate on that. And, uh, and I could probably pull that off. But to say that I'm confident shooting 40 or 50 rounds and do everything I can behind the rifle absolutely perfect and then to, to guarantee that everything I did with my reloading is absolutely perfect is a lot to ask for. Uh, anybody that does load development knows that the ultimate goal of load development is to create, to find a, a projectile and a powder charge and possibly a, a case overall length that's going to work best out of your rifle. And by work best... Uh, Typically, it's a low standard deviation and a low extreme spread. The low extreme spread is really important for us, long range shooting, because if your your velocity is off 30, 40 feet per second at 800 yards, that could drop your bullet low of the target or high of the target, and you could completely miss. So getting the, the, the powder consistent and finding that, that sweet spot that's going to give you good results um, down range is important. Now, instead of going the hard route, this is something new to me. Instead of going the hard route and loading 30 or 40 rounds, um, why not go straight to the chronograph? If the ultimate goal is to get yourself a low, a low SD and a low extreme spread, why can't we do all that and completely remove ourselves from the rifle and then just concentrate on what the powder and bullet do in the barrel of the gun that we're shooting? That's what my game plan is. I loaded um, eight bullets. So you don't need a lot. And, and I basically just loaded two strings of the same amount of powder. So my low is going to be 41.6 and my high is going to be 43 grains of H4350. I'm going to do these in 0.2 increments. So 41.6, 41.8, 42, all the way up to 43. And basically all I'm going to do is measure the velocity. And what I'm looking for is a flat spot. And I'm going to draw this out on a graph when I get back to the house so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. It's a lot easier to see visually than it is for me to talk about it. So we'll save that for when we get back to the house. But I'm going to draw a little graph with the different speeds and uh, the different powder charges. And what I'm hoping it's going to show you guys is a flat line where, um, say, between 42.4 and, 40, and 43 show the same velocity even though the powder is going to be different almost a grain of powder or three quarters of a grain of powder is going to be different the velocity is still going to be the same and that's because the bullet in the in the barrel are basically working in tandem and that's where your sweet spot's going to be typically there's a low a low node and a high node um, we're shooting long range so we're looking for speed uh, especially shooting in high winds the velocity of the bullet's pretty important and I want to try to get as much as I can in a safe manner out of these bullets. So let's do this, see how it goes. Uh, this will be the first rifle I've really ever done this with. And uh, I've, I've talked to a few other people that, that do this, and that's basically the way they do it. And if you want to refine this even more, say like between 42.2 and 42.8, that flat spot, you can actually go back out again and concentrate on that little number in between those couple grains rather than doubt 
your whole load development and say, maybe, maybe I pulled that. Maybe I, I had a bad trigger pull. Because when you're measuring these groups, especially out of an accurate rifle, at 300 yards, you may shoot a group that's 3 inches. You may shoot one that's 3.15. You may shoot one that's 2.94. And really, you're talking about the smallest amount. And at 300 yards, if your barrel is off just a hair, or maybe your 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 view of the, the target, you maybe had some mirage or you're shooting with a, a suppressor or something, uh, the smallest amount is going to throw that bullet off, and you could be overlooking your best groups. So this is my thought process. That's what we're going to do today. Uh, I'm glad you guys are here watching. Let's get the camera set up, and we'll take some shots and see how it goes. And, and I loaded two rows of these. Um, so I'm going to shoot the first string, see what happens. I may shoot the second string. And, and verify that that flat spot is going to be in the same um, powder charge on both strings. I don't even have a target set up down here. I'm just shooting into a bank. So as far as accuracy, I'm not worried at all. I'm going to shoot through my strings here. My GoPro just died. I was going to put the camera on the magneto speed so you guys could see the, the velocity yourselves. But we're going to go over that once I get back to the house. And uh, we're going to draw a graph out and stuff so we can actually visually see where the bullet uh, velocity begins to flatten out. So let's get this started. I'm going to start my low is uh, 41.6. We're going to take this back to the house. We're going to draw a graph and let you guys visually see where the, the accuracy nodes are going to be for this rifle. The, the barrel, the velocity of this barrel is uh, uh, seems to be a little slower than what I was using before. I had a BART line before and uh, this is actually a Krieger barrel, so uh, normally Kriegers are, are quite fast. I'm a little surprised by the velocity. It's typically about 50, 60 feet per second slower than what my other barrel was, but I've only got about 35 rounds through this. I basically just went to the, the range there, um, shot the 10 squib loads, went through my little process, uh, uh, shoot clean, shoot clean, and then that was it. So uh, still basically a brand new barrel. I got a lot more breaking in to do as far as getting rounds through. Normally they say about 200, 250 rounds. It starts to level itself off and you will gain uh, velocity as you shoot. So that's what I'm hoping is going to happen with this. I'm actually traveling to West Virginia uh, November 4th and 5th for uh, the Peacemaker PRS shoot. So should be interesting. I got a little bit of work to do with this barrel and uh, I'm going to take you guys along with me for whatever I'm going to do with it. So uh, let's get back to the house. We'll draw a graph, let you guys visually see this. And me personally, I might reload a few more bullets and try to get that velocity up a little bit. Hey guys, just got back to the house here and drew up my little graph. One thing I want to talk about is looking at the velocities. Um, the velocities are not where I want them to be. So I'm not sure if maybe I'm going to have to try to use some different powder. Um, I tried a couple different style bullets and the velocities are all... 50, 75 feet per second slower than where I need them to be. Now this isn't going to be official, at least for me, but I wanted to share this with you guys because this uh, has a lot of pros to doing load development like this as far as I'm concerned. It totally eliminates you from the equation and basically uh, all that has to shine is your reloading skills. So take your time on your reloading. You don't need a whole lot of bullets. This is the graph I drew. Uh, I'll bring you in and let you guys see. So what I got is the, the speeds down below here. The black is my first round, or my first string of eight. The red is my second string of eight. I ended up by shooting both strings just to see what it gave me. Plus I had to put some extra bullets through the round. I'm trying to run up the round count a little bit. And over here is the velocities uh, just generalized. I started at 26 all the way up to 27, 25. My lowest uh, powder charge, 26, 22. My highest was 2743 on my second string so this will give you a good idea visually where your velocity starts to level out it doesn't take you a lot of bullets to get you here what i mean by that is literally eight bullets gave me good information i verified that with eight more the whole game plan was to use the the uh the chronograph to find where the where two powder charges begin to level off and this actually does that some of these are a little bit over exaggerated um, like from 2703 to 2701 it looks like a big slope but it's actually only two feet per second difference so looking at this here you can see uh, if we follow the black string you can see from here to here we got 2668 to 2672 so you're only off four feet per second 
that's way slower than I want I want to be but that at least shows you where the bullet begins to plateau that may be something to look at if I didn't shoot the second string the second string brings me down here so from 2668 to 2658 10 feet per second between the two so that's something to uh, keep an eye on as we keep going up you can see the the velocity climb climb once we get up to here you can see it flatten out again now looking at these two speeds I shot the red and I shot the black and the red string both both strings so the first one here the black is 2703 the red is 2699 so we're only off by four feet per second on two different strings and then from here 2703 to the next black is 2701 two feet per second and then my second string over here the red is uh, the black is 2701, the red is 2702. So this right here looks promising as far as finding a velocity that's going to flatten out, produce uh, consistent velocities, give you some good accuracy downrange. My problem is the velocity is way slower than where I need to be. I can't, at 2700 feet per second, that's, that's maybe 50 feet per second slower than where I want to be. So that's why I think... After talking to the gunsmith, I'm way early. Obviously, this wasn't going to be nothing official. I actually wanted to do this to, to make a video to show you guys. But uh, me personally, I'm going to have to burn some rounds through that barrel and hopefully get the speed up a little bit or maybe switch powders. Um, I like shooting the Hornady ELD bullets. They fly good out of all the guns I shoot, plus they're affordable. Um, I just wanted to share this method with you guys. Uh, it has a lot of advantages, like I said. And uh, it can give you pretty good results without having to burn 50, 100 rounds at the range or pull your hair out because you think maybe you flinched on one shot or maybe you did something wrong on, a, on, a, on one group of your load development. You're on your way home and you're, you're second guessing everything you're doing, which is what I tend to do a lot. So quick, easy way to get yourself some information. If you want to refine this even more, you could actually take like this string here that I was talking about that was out by a couple feet per second. And you can actually work in between that because I did these in 0.2 uh, grains. So you can actually break it into 0.1 grains, load up four more bullets or eight more bullets, and work in between those two um, powder charges and see if you can really refine that to your specific rifle. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for all the new sub subscribers. The channel's growing quite a bit. If you like what I'm talking about, hit the like button or... Uh, or please subscribe for the uh, next stuff coming out. So thanks for watching. Once again, November 4th and 5th, we're going to West Virginia for the Peacemaker Precision Rifle Shoot. Should be fun. So stick around. Thank you.